St. Clair exit into map number two with once again a victory, but can they defy the odds and finally dethrone Lucky7 to make their way to the losers' semifinals? Tenrec and Keg here to take you through map two now here in the VCL NAOQ, powered by Zippo. Keg, it was a hard-fought victory, but that hasn't really stopped so far for the Saints here against Lucky7. Uh, you know, defensively sided the whole way through, but both teams, they really put on a show. Yeah, absolutely. This was such an illuminating defensive side for both teams, but the attacking side was a big struggle as well. Both these teams, as soon as they had the proper read defensively, the attacking team had no other options at the beginning of the round. We're talking 30 seconds in, the round was effectively over. There were a few nuances rounds where things were a little bit more different, but generally, defenders, they knew where to stack up, they knew what to expect every beat of the rounds, and from there, defense had the reign supreme. It was really only at the end in overtime did we see really, really well played and really well executed attacking rounds from SCC. They knew exactly how to pivot around when it mattered most and catch finally Lucky 7 off guard. But again, as you mentioned before, Tenrek, this is the map that has worked so well for St. Clair's to the entire qualifier bracket. That's their safety map. Now we're going to be going to a map where they lost the last time they faced against this team. It's true. They lost the last two times they faced against this team. That tends to be how Lucky 7 plays uh, uh, Sunset. That is their own go-to, their own safety pick after the hard bans. Um, man, 18 first kills? That is un. Real dude, Lucky7, again, constantly getting in front of it. And the funny thing is, it was not necessarily Ferbsa every time. Um, he did get a lot of first bloods on the defense from the mid invades, but that a lot of the time that was just because St. Clair didn't mid invade for a lot of ascent, um, particularly on the defense. But um, a, a lot of the time it was like the lurk checks that Lucky7 was using to, to make sure that, you know, nobody was poking their head out. And uh, in the earlier stages of the game, they won those far more consistently to open up sight takes. Yeah, absolutely. And with that being said, too, we do see Ferbza MVP at the match, but this wasn't really a big duelist game. No. This was more so just the supporting players. Trick had a lot to show in the early rounds with his Odin, but mostly, again, just relying on the Sentinel initiators to really carry these rounds. Use your duelist as that entry opportunity and mostly no heroics. All team fights, every beat of every round, always just clobbering each other. And that's why we saw so many first bloods uh, so many first bloods in the favor of Lucky 7, but even just snowballing rounds together that we had seen so early on didn't quite continue on the attacking side. No, uh, and, and it came down to, you know, uh, how quick your execution could be. St. Clair were very good at reacting to that initial util that came out uh, onto any site. They could rotate back through CT, lickety split, head on back and, and go for those crunches that they just did so well. Um, those off angles are not as learned as, uh, uh, you know, on Sunset, though. So uh, Lucky7, I think, again, as always, have the drop on their competitors going into this. And, you know, the records do speak for themselves. Their only two losses so far, these qualifiers on Sunset, have been to two teams that are already in VCL now. So good job, them. Um, but it's scary for St. Clair, who, while they have taken Lucky7 the farthest possible without actually winning a 13-11 both times, I believe, um, if not a 13-10, um, they, they still have dropped the ball when it comes to that late stage of the game where Lucky7 is able to escape with it. Yeah, I mean, I thought for sure once we swapped to the attacking side, Lucky7, they wouldn't lose any attacking rounds. That's their, been their entire forte, the entirety of these qualifiers. But no, again, going back to those Ascent reads, St. Clair's had a really good opportunity to uh, deny those strings of rounds. But we also see big strings of attacking rounds on Sunset too. This is going to be another punchy map. A lot of gunfights, maybe some rotations once we get about a quarter of the way through each attacking rounds. But for the most part, I'm expecting big group fights again. And I'm expecting very, very quick rounds. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we're going to kind of fly through these first two or three rounds pretty uh, pretty easily here, um, regardless of who comes out on top, which, again, could be anybody. My eyes are glued more than anything to Will and Seth, our controllers, for this fight. Um, uh, you know, as you know, the sunset meta has evolved, people have started to understand where they need to post up. The openings uh, ha have just needed to become cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Um, and where you're tossing your smoke, whether it's into Boba or Market for B site or up to Link or back to Elbow for A, um, those initial approaches on top of a smoke and a paranoia have been very key 
for these teams to actually get in and win those initial 5v2s, 5v3s that they try to hold down so heavily, especially when you're not going for mid invades, which neither of these teams really were that often other than Furbs to just holding an operator. No, again, it was just mostly big group team fights, the entirety of Ascent, and I don't think that's going to change here <laughs> either. I, I'm really curious to see what the Sentinel prowess is going to look like going into this next matchup too. I mean, Cypher has been huge on Sunset oh, yeah. since release, his tripwires being buffed, even more of a reason why. But, you know, if you're going to be locked down by certain pieces of utility, like we saw St. Clair's do few different rounds on their own attacking side. This could be a very linear attack from them too. We could just be seeing A site, A site, A site, maybe mid to B, but mostly I'm looking for those A hits. I agree. I, I think that's where we're going to start out. I think that's where Sinclair is going to start out. Guys, again, they have elected to begin on the attack. That is not what they've done. That, that is that is what they did um, the previous time. Um, or no, it's not. Never mind. They 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 have elected to start they're swapping on sides yeah. this time. Both times they're they are swapping sides. They are starting on the attack, and I think that is the right call with how um, Lucky Seven has been operating as a team. I think Saint Clair should still expect to go five, seven, four, eight out of this half. But if they're able to match that speed early on, again, make sure that Lucky Seven can't get themselves committed to a play style, can't get themselves too invested in their playbook, then it should be pretty smooth sailing for them. It really comes down to who is able to to, to get that momentum, get that snowball rolling first. Yeah, like, you know, again, going back to Ascend 2, I'm not expecting a lot early round. I'm mostly expecting big gunfights, big impact plays, late mid round, post plant, end round. These will be quick rounds, but it'll be quick sight tanks, quick spike plants, and quick rounds in that fashion. So it's kind of hard. You know, we'll have to wait and see what it's all going to look like as we're still waiting for one player before we get into agent select. Uh, but alongside that, you know, uh, we saw a good performance from St. Clair's Tenrak. I think the big question now is that that was their safe safety map. Sunset has not been their safety map, but can we see map three? Absolutely we can. Absolutely we can. I think, uh, well, I, I think Lucky7 have the capability of taking us to map three just because of their consistency on Sunset so far, but I also think St. Clair have the ability to shut this down here and now. Uh, their util usage and their timing has been uh, very keyed up so far, and you know, while you're in it for the long haul today, St. Clair needs to be this prepared at all times. I don't think they're letting their guards down for a second here, and again, starting out on the attack, Things look good for them to be able to, to get the ideas flowing, get the comms going, and just really blow this site apart. All right, let's see what the agents are going to be looking like, though. Will this be an attacker side of game? Will this just be a gunfight late in game? Let's find out as we go into agent select. We have, okay, a sky making an appearance. I never thought I'd see the day again. <laughs> I don't mind this at all. Double initiator comes from St. Clair's. Lucky Seven themselves, only a single initiator. Now, I know we said we should focus on Will and Sif with the controllers, and I don't blame you. I, I think we still should. But Caillou and Smiley on this double initiator duo is going to enable instinct so much for these early attacking rounds that it'll be similar to what we had seen uh, yesterday's sunset with Paint, where it, he's just going to be able to fly everywhere because Lucky7 won't be able to immediately trade it out. Yeah, St. Clair is going to walk these mid B switches like a dog. Market is unabashedly instincts if Caillou and Smiley play their cards right. Uh, you could so easily just hop into there or just take Courtyard at any point you really want for that matter. It might be better for Lucky7 to just commit a smoke early on to that entrance just to, again, you know, play off the uncertainty that both of these teams have been working with. I think that's the really admirable thing is despite the fact that, yeah. you know, this is now the third time we're going to sunset between these two teams in the past, what, week and a half, two weeks? Uh, you know, every round is still such a vacuum and every round is still so, uh, you know, up in the air for both these teams. It's a question of when is this team you know, going to decide to push through mid. When are these, you know, uh, when are these guys going to decide to crunch uh, a main entrance rather than a main exit? Um, it's it's these big macro switches that um, has led to quite the entertaining guessing game yeah. for map number one that will uh, that will lead us here into uh, into sunset. Big thing to consider though, double initiators from both teams, each team having a breach. Lucky seven though, hard information with trick. Owl drone. Available Hunter's Fury right gives there. hard information, but so does the recon bolt. There is none of that for St. Clair's. It's nothing but flashes, and Caillou has to treat those flashes very carefully. They don't regenerate anymore. You have to make sure you use them at the proper time for info and to enable again instinct to get on a site, kind of like A. This is the less popular one, but the one that St. Clair would rather take on the pistol. Giza will get overwhelmed openly. Up can Pecky's fault line very effective so far. But St. Clair are able to reopen, take up Link. Clorit can deny Instinct's kind of blunt push-up. 
So St. Clair will opt to play for the distance and the plant instead. They can hold on to Sight, hold on to Elbow. Lucky Seven, all they really have is Link. And so Cloric's gonna t try and take over CT again. Can burn a bird in the process and we'll be, we'll, we'll be able to hop onto Sight. Cloric doesn't have his gun out, silly. And Furbsa has no coverage. So we'll left to fight the demons on Sight and can't do it. Lucky Seven completely dismantled in the end there. Yeah, I really think this is just going to be an attacker side of game where everyone pushes A site. I think Cloric and Giza on those ciphers are going to be good at locking down B and effectively just severs the map in half. I, I do think we'll see more of a mid presence going into these next few rounds. If there's an early round to see, it should be here from St. Clair's. Big weapon advantage from SCC's side. They could push through mid, get that link control, and show an early dominance on B. But again, that's more of a mental game kind of thing. And even L7 are expecting it. They have three stacked up on B very little utility presence on a site and even through the one way disrespected by scc there are enough flashes available for someone to help out instinct yet again to just get that site entry which they'll grab again here hopping up their elbow this time instinct to open up the back pretty easy plant here for smiley now it should be just a simple cleanup crew here Lucky Seven don't have any concrete way of entering, so they'll have to play as the path, which means that a lot of this uh, initiator util will connect onto several. Verbsa can trade at least the one. Lucky Seven playing hesitation whenever they're able to, but Instinct is able to get rid of the scraps there. Gloric also quite low. Oh no, timing, timing, timing. Timing, maybe, okay. Ooh. Yeah. I got scared for a, a second. There. Yeah, find out in season two, L7 versus SCC. Instinct again, please, please, you're giving me a heart attack. I don't have a heart anymore. Torek is there, good trades. White. And Giza oh. can pick it up. Yeah, good cleanup by St. Clair. Lucky seven, you know, the ideas were flowing, but they couldn't really uh, come onto paper. There's too much that St. Clair had to throw at the problem. And that's going to be kind of the MO for a lot of this. Once you get on site, you kind of just like, you empty your pockets at the gate and uh, and then play for the gun fight. Enemy remaining. And I said this last round should be the round to see uh, a B-side poke coming out from SCC. Just experiment, see what the Cypher Trap side could look like, where those camps, just like on Palm Tree, are. But it could have been last round, but this round's even better. This is your bonus buy. If you can catch L7 off guard, especially because they're so focused in mid this time, to push sight, remove guns, again, big mental fortitude. You would be in the heads of L7. This is really Cloric's round. Those tripwires need to make a huge showing. But no one's directly on B. Just outside in Marketplace. Tripwire 1 already destroyed. Furbsons thankfully gets the opening pick, but still. You just remove Smiley. There's still flashes available with Caillou. Instinct does not have to be nearly as enabled as Furbsa seemingly down, does. Miss. But... Doesn't mean that he still can't go crazy, which he will attempt to. Hopping on to B site on his lonesome to see if he can Finding. grab a follow up here. Remaining. Can't do it. Can't Pecky is able to finalize very low, but that'll be B site cleaned up, which means that all Caillou can really do is grab some extra creds, hold himself up, and see how many kills he can get on the post plane. No regen flashes, no utility, nothing to work with at all. Opener, looking for another. Double swing comes out reactively. So Lucky7 will hold on to three this time and uh, get their bonus. So, so far, so good for both sides, really. I have uh, no, no huge complaints apart from really just timing that both these teams have been kind of missing the boat on. But that's, uh, uh, you know, this is, this, is, this is where you're allowed to make those mistakes a little heavier. And Lucky7, they can clearly recover from it. Yeah, sure thing. And SEC, that, I'm sorry, for Saints, that's a big round yeah. where they had a lot of info gathering. Even if it wasn't just your typical initiation, now you get to see what the mid prowess is going to look like. What is the timing for Trick going to be in tiles in the future? Who's holding mid? When are they pushing up? And most importantly, what is Cloric's default cipher setup? We see that tripwire again. Will the camera go back on the palm tree? I'm not sure if that was discovered last round. But Clark's gonna hold on to the majority of this utility just to see if this is a B push. It will be. So all that utility does come out on the default setup. But it's already expected. And Smiley was that opening pick. First last round. Maybe waiting out this utility to make sure he actually uses it this time. But look at that showstopper from Instinct. 
absolutely going to take mid control and use that as leverage in the marketplace. That's going to sever the rotations late round for L7. That's why Will would just rather hand over top instead and play for the field of B site. Instinct, beautiful paranoia to shut out a lot of showstopper options. He'll still hop onto site, look for some damage, can't find any. Actually, may have clipped Cloric a little bit there. That Seth can finish. And now the real invasion. Right the crunch from Main and Market is very successful. Will still on site, looking for a fight, but I don't know if we'll be able to find one. It's perfect oh. timing onto both, in fact. What a beautiful pocket of opportunity. That Lucky 7 will now turn into site control, except for Instinct is still on and will grab two for himself. Ferbs are now in the fight of his life to maintain some semblance of momentum for L7 here on the defense, but with the camera already catching him, might have been a done deal from the jump. Has to search for some way to get inside, grab at least one. Camera taps him again. This is gross stall coming from the Saints just to make sure that Ferbs can't grab a thing. He doesn't. Shields can get held onto here for Giza. A St. Clair make it a 3-1 game. That was great from Saints, but keep in mind too, backside for B wasn't cleared at all. And Will was able to tuck in and just wait for the perfect opportunity to strike and nearly ruin the round for Saints. Something to consider in the future. Saints need to start scaling out more, taking more backline control once that spike goes down. This is the first time now in this map we've seen defensively L7 having a proper read into the beginning of this round. A four stack on A site, full expectations, Saints bouncing between A and B, A, B over and over again. This paranoia from Seth is everything this round to shut down that left side aggression. Blinded. You've got the rest of it hold up. Oh, no immediate rush. Info gathered immediately off of Caillou's flash. That's going to mean, okay, we can't push up just yet. Never mind, the one-way dissipates. And as it does, the rest of the push comes in. Instinct attempts to go for the in to open the board up. Will, though, can clear it. And we'll toss the smoke for good measure. As the Neural Theft procs a second time to guarantee Remaining. Will's position, Giza can track it. I have retrieved the spike. And so a Cypher v Cypher for the round this time as Cleric will come screaming back onto A as Giza sets up shot. Cage up Link just to make sure no one is too close. There is not a lot of intel to work with, and with Giza being just one shot, gotta really watch his back. It's so hard to push if you're Cloric here on this angle. Yeah. Spy cam activated. Don't want to be seen yet. Only one linear path now to take. Cloric does have full utils, so can Cage his way through backside to at least get some level of uncertainty? No! He can just track down the headshot once Giza decides to poke out. And it'll hand Lucky 7 their second round. Weapon here. Great read again from L7. The one way made me a little scared. I thought SCC would get that information back away. But as soon as it dissipated, L7 did not give Saints a choice whatsoever. They forced out that initial gunfight and really caught the attacking team off guard. But now, A site, B site, A site, B site, bounce back and forth has been become readable for L7. For all we know, they might just stack up on A again with the expectation that there could be a change from Saints. But before we get into that 4D chess nonsense, think about mid. It's yet to be touched by this attacking team. If there's a chance to adapt and go somewhere else, yep, we see that attacker ping. Switch up the script. It has to be a mid side play. All too often, mid top hasn't really been a question for either of these teams. The defense on it has just been too strong. In particular, Ken Pecky has been really good at denying this. But SCC, though. Take their chances with the help of this smoke up the top steps to at least guarantee tiles, clear away Double the crossfire. Opener. There is an angle available, but it's a long shot, quite literally. Owl drones oh, sticking yeah. around for instinct's sake, making sure that Caillou cannot invade. And with the bird, bird the nose, the rest of Lucky Seven knows! Fight the rest of Lucky mid. Seven conquers for the most part. But with still two standing for the Saints. With his spike trapped in not the worst place in the world, Seth really just needs a smoke, but he also knows that Lucky 7 knows that they might need it, so we'll instead just pick it up, play for the dry handling of Courtyard. Giz is actually going to extend here to maybe find a 1v1 and make this an easier game. With 35 seconds on the clock, he had the freedom to do so, Giza! Good sell. Beautiful flick! And a site is open for business. Seth on the run back, making sure Trick can't track left. him, and they can't... Oh, this is interesting, though. Just the TP on the site. Make sure no one can uh, cut you short from the entrance. Nope. It's just making sure nobody's on site itself. 
That's a fun way to clear it. Hunter's Fury now on default just to play for the slowdown. It'll actually force out Giza early so Cloric can find that kill. That's a fun way to peek it. Seth, now the only one remaining. TP's back to elbow to grab some semblance of setup, but we'll have to play against the double swing that Lucky7 knows that they have because they don't really have much else apart from two shock darts that Trick, I guess he can throw, but he definitely don't want to do that. Instead, they'll dry check. Trick luckily can save face after Cloric loses the 1v, and it's a tie game now. A great double swing at the very end there. I love the trickery that we had seen in that 2v2. Uh, it was Seth who threw a paranoia off screen towards Marketplace to try to sell that this would be a last second B approach. Not the case. The only thing that really gave it away for Saints and the reason why I think they lost that round was because entirely of that neural theft right before the spike had planted. It baited out even two. Seth having that sh uh, from the shadows can't teleport to another site. They know where the rotations would be coming from from the defenders. It was a shutdown all the way. And for Saints now, this is going to be an important round to try to bring back that economy a little bit. Maybe try to farm up Instinct Showstopper once again with just Sheriffs. The mid-side control again could be a bloody brawl. It's just getting that back lane control of mid and maybe getting rid of Kempeki first will have a lot more leverage off the shoulders of Saints. Yeah, I appreciate them vying for this more often, even if it's just for staying power. It's been very helpful to their ability to just throw off Lucky7 force them to play even farther back than they really wanted to, which granted, Kenpeki does love playing really far back here. So does Firmso. He's going to enter from CT with a showstopper and will force out just a blast pack from Instinct to play Getaway, but Caillou is still holed up in this corner, so a lot of clearing that still needs to be done. Kenpeki can do a good portion of it onto Tiles in particular. Smiley's actually going to get burned to a crisp before he can even let that flash fly. And so nobody from Saints finds anything of connection. Caillou sees that as the one window from the double flash, though, to maybe hop in and grab one will onto Furbsa, but that's all they'll get. Giza forced to fight the rest of the team. Can't do it at all. Lucky 7 make it a leading game. 4-3 now. Saints have to go for a timeout in these next few rounds to figure out, okay, again, we're in that same boat as Ascend. We're getting the early reads against us now. We're losing these initial gunfights. We did at the very least force out some ultimates, at least Furbs does. That last round on a Thrifty. Not something to have to worry about anytime soon. Instinct still needs to farm up his own, though. I'm looking at the double rolling thunder for both these teams. They're going to be the big flooding point for right both. There. Early Rolling Thunder should be coming out from Smiley. Kempeki's gonna hold his right as the sight take happens to deny the plant. It's a big timing game between these two breaches. They're the win condition for both teams to make sure those Rolling Thunders do not find any impact. And Will's still on the back lines too. Looking to be that point to help out Kempeki. Be like, hey, we got alt now. We gotta do it. But no, he gives up a site. They're playing purposely for Kempeki's ult. Yeah, they're, they're willing to let this go by so the rest of Lucky 7 can kind of stabilize. This is a, a lot of leaning on Kempeki, but could be justifiable considering how much control Rolling Thunder has yeah. over this site. I mean, you're right just going to have to hold yourself up and... Oh, the timing, like, Tenric. This is smiley. huge. I mean, this is a big This could extension. get everybody on L7. Yeah, this will be... Really comes down to where Kanpaki lines this up and what oh, fight they feet. decide to take. They'll go for sight. Oh, so will Smiley. He thought the invasion was coming from backside. Link is the oh, weakest one. Will hops back into back site, traded out for Trick here. Lucky Seven not actually winning a majority of their swings, and Firbsa also bad timing. So Trick has to abandon ship, and ultimately the trade will still go Saints' way. Now tied up at four. I thought for sure the round was over for Saints when that Rolling Thunder missed. Yeah. Smiley just barely clipped the back lanes of that uh, retake from L7. Thankfully, though, it did nullify what Kempeki's Rolling Thunder could have done. Stun, squash Saints, holding those distinct positions on A-Site. They I had that can't... one second of breathing room to maneuver out of the way, thanks to Smiley's all. Oh, but Saints, they're playing a tricky game now. They can't just go ping-ponging sites anymore. L7 think they had that read again. Expecting Saints to double down with the lack of Kempeki's ult to go back to A couldn't be farther from the truth. A reset up from Cloric means not on B-Site. Instead, that lurk in mid has been too strong against the defense and they're shutting it down with a trip. Less and defense for oh, B-Site! They have Trick instead. Yeah, they, He's a Sentinel now. Yeah, that's a good substitute for sure. Just put an Operator down instead of a Trapwire, Keck. And 
Now a second operator shot that will get denied by fault line plus the smoke trick will just play for the slow insert. Smiley can shut that down luckily, so Cloric will now stand alone on the side itself. The rest of Lucky 7, once again, very much ready, very much in time for this. And in fact, Will is going to actually pop out and make his way through Boba. Giza missed out on that sight line, and so Maria paid the price for it. Nope! Great turn. Uh, now you have to fight out a little earlier, but this is such a good line that Giza can take. It's enough for three. No way. Cloric. Giza! Cloric looking Buddy. for two. Guys. Guys. doesn't check! But Giza can turn back around and find the fourth. Great reaction time in the end, ultimately from Giza. That'll net Saints the lead again. It's the corners, man. No one checks the corners. <laughs> Everyone's so... I, I don't want to say tunnel vision. I don't think that's the right word, but it's like semi-tunnel vision. You're so focused on everybody still being in Boba sight that you don't realize that someone may have stuck through the defenses at some point, but uh, we'll have to go back in the mods at some point to see where Clark ended up at the beginning of that post plan because I'm pretty sure he just held that angle the entire time. I think so. Unlucky, really. Yeah, back to full mid control. You know that your enemy team has a lesser weapon by. Instinct's gonna flourish a whole lot more here with this early sight space. But of course, L7, they recognize this too. They're gonna completely guard down mid sight, giving a market in the process. This is a really good week from Saints. Yeah, this will be an easy cut as long as Cloric is dealt with in a, an efficient fashion. Guarded by the trap wire. Here's all the noise. No way. Easy Come pop on, guys. out. Only good for one here, though, and has to cage in order to save face, but too little too late. Rest of Saints are online and on site. Rotation into Boba should go pretty smoothly here. It's just a question of how much you lose in the process. So far, absolutely nothing. Trick, last run remaining. Can at least find one more on the Marshall, but that's the only one he'll get for the round. And the Saints keep three stable to make it 6-4. Oh, what is the KD of Seth now? Because every round, it feels like the last few rounds he's been getting 3Ks after 3Ks. <laughs> really? See, I, I was I was more looking more at the utility and the buys these last few rounds rather than the KDA. You, uh, if I hadn't looked now, I would have thought Seth was top fragging the whole server. He's <laughs> tied for second place, but it's Giza who's also been popping off on B site, denying any sort of retake potential from L7. That's gigantic. And now. Saints can completely flip the script again. They don't have to pressure A anymore. Cloric's setup has not been enough to hold down Saints, especially with these pseudo split pushes that the team likes to employ. Seth teleports, driving this. Oh no. Oh. Fourth falls here. That's an open B site. Oh, and that's he does. Huge, yeah. Seth now has free reign over Boba. Unchecked, unfettered. Unstoppable. This Saints team appears to be on the attack. Really just good, clean fun being had by all. That Ferbson does not want any part of this round. He's going to head over back and just play for the Lurks. He's going to get heard by Giza, so everybody from Saints is going to try and chase this down a little bit. But 7-4 now from another just very quick, efficient, Perfectly done execution on to site. Go figure. Looks like Lucky 7 might have to play for the 8 4 climb back in order to get this to map 3, as they cannot hold on to anything else. Yeah, I mean, this isn't out of the ordinary for either that team, though, because half. both these teams, the last time they faced each other, was very attacker sided. Uh, Saints, they had won seven attacking rounds in the second half of their last matchup, and L7, well, they only got four. They ended up winning the map, oh, thankfully, off of those four defensive rounds, but. So far, this is pretty beef for beat what we had seen before. In the last matchup, we're still lucky 7-1 and out. It's true. Their attack is far, far, far better than their defense. 49 to 37 rounds won on those sides, and they've played about the same amount of them. Instinct kicking things off the showstopper gets caught by the trap wire. Definitely didn't expect that one, and it's enough for Cloric to shut that down. Now using the neural theft to guarantee that everyone else is in position for Ferbsa to go for this lurk. Caught by the trap wire as well, but oh, oh. now the camera guaranteeing as well. He's got to run back, and so Saints maybe have another opportunity to go for the diversion. No, they will fully commit to this, and the one way works more in Giza's favor than Tricks. Neural theft now from the other end, and he'll force Gan Pecky to do see dope for this fight. That Cloric also found out on site, so Saints once again have easy access to that. Lucky 7, all they can play from is Link, is Spike will fall gently onto site. 
on the runaway. Ferbs, though, with the showstopper, can at least clear away Caillou, Jimmy but too. that's the long range fight dealt with. Now you've got to invade. Now you've got to enter onto these default site entrances. Seth and Smiley can hold them both down. The bouncers that lead us to an 8 4 half. Yeah, if you're L7 right now, an 8 4 half is not that bad for you. That's pretty good, all things considered. And going back to that previous matchup again, the side did end originally with L7 in the attacking side, keep in mind, 9 and 3. So, pretty par of the course, albeit the roles have been reversed here. But as you mentioned, Lucky 7, the attacking side is their best side on this map. I'm expecting a lot more brazen plays, a lot more fast pushes that Instinct had at first, but slowed down towards the end. We're Probably going to see a lot more big brawls outside of A-side again. I'm not imagining big strategic changes from either one of these attacking teams. No, never mind. Out of the Zippo wow. replay, we see a big push towards B instead. They are flipping the script. Expectation again from Saints. Okay, they're going to push A too. Not the case. This is already a huge deviation. That Lucky 7... I think has to commit to already. But again, it's got to be so quick. Premature shock dart. That isn't necessary to clear out that early cyber cage. Ferbsa hops on and clears Boba by proxy, but market is uh, not as easy. Seth can find Kanpeki, so this initiation post plan is a little easier to deal with. Seth is still uncleared, and so is Giza. The entirety of St. Clair, in fact, is unchecked so far. And Lucky7 have to go for the One second, less organic extension that Ferbsa is still able to complete pretty well on. It's down to Will in 1v2 that is very much winnable. One smoke to his name. First tap from Caillou, drags first oh, they go? one out. Yeah, where have we headed off to? Are we going for the full rotation? Which way are we heading to? Caillou one way, Smiley from the same. But it's enough. 10 HP defines round 13. That goes to the Saints. Such an important round for Saints. So, so good. Now they can force buy and guarantee, hopefully, 10-4. But I think the big question is, are we going to see the force buy coming out from L7? The answer is yes. I really like this call. Is it a risky call? Absolutely. But I mean, look, you're already down a map. You may be facing elimination from here. Three, four rounds might be on the line. You have to pull out a Hail Mary. This has to be the fast push with the stingers yet again. The goal now, enable Ferbza. Take down Giza. Get on the site and this time take back site and take... Um, marketplace and boba control. L7 need to spread their wings this round or it might be over. Yeah, this is really gonna count. One of the last opportunities that Lucky7 may have to stay in contention for challengers. Clora copping in through mid. It's a fast exec through courtyard and main that'll net Lucky7 the opening half of sight and will Holding back to catch Smiley also. So far, so good. Spraying through the smokes to guarantee no entry through market. Now recognizes that there's also that presence from Caillou in Courtyard. Furbs that can shut that down too. This is so well done, but still the gun advantage going the way of Saints. Not much longer though. Instinct has to pick up something different if he wants to get by the rest of this, or does he? One outlaw shot left in the chamber. Two members of Lucky7 to deal with, and it's Cloric that can finalize. Lucky7 will get some stability and a fifth round. I mean, the idea now for L7 is you just have to keep catching Saints off guard. Yeah. Again, both that these teams are so read dependent on their here. defense that if they have to over rotate to the opposite site where the actual execution takes place, it, the, the, the chances of winning a round for that defense would lower so much. Oh, a little bit of a, like CSI type B picture or something. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, it was like almost like a crime scene backside of B. <laughs> It really was, Figuring yeah. out, p piecing it together. Huh. Who won that attacking round? Here? Hmm. This is my last day on the job. Yeah. We may be able to find out what happens in mid in the future. These LA streets are brutal. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me back when I was a green officer myself. <laughs> All those L7 folks pushing in on mid. If only they knew about Smiley. <laughs> if only, indeed. Well, it seems like they have an idea. I mean, Can Pecky's played this position a billion gazillion times. So, box out for the entry from Ferbsa. Uh, hey, when you enable this guy, he seems to get pretty good. Good for one, rest of Lucky7 can come screaming through Bova and clear out the rest. But now that homework looks done. We take B-Sight, we take Spike. 
we take ourselves to a potential 6-9 game as long as all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. One enemy remaining. That's one. That's the I. And that's the T. Oh. I know. I That was really... That was fire, right? I'm gonna yeah. write that one down and recycle it. Bars. And I will survive <laughs> <laughs> so it's 6-9 to nine right now. Uh, again, the onus right now really comes down to just saints to figure out, okay, how do, again, do we not get caught off guard? And I think Smiley holding that same position Kempeki did on the defense works out well. Already, Saints recognizing far earlier than L7 that this mid lurk is devastating and be a great pressure tool to, again, cut off gigantic rotates that these defenders rely on. Big push here from L7. No real ults to work with yet, but soon to cycle through. Now, this is where the Sova comes in handy. You can clear out A site without depending on too much utility and body power, but mid side instead, trying to sell this way. Oh, well, there he is. Yeah. Sold no longer. That's, uh, that's gotta be the ghost signal for Lucky7 to just put the foot to the floor here now. Uh, they don't know how far back Smiley is. He's actually going all the way around the pedestal here. Oh, very unfortunate timing for both sides. But Instinct's Lurk up right lobby has actually led to Lucky7 being a bit sandwiched on top of the blind from Smiley. It should be a done deal, but no. Still the space out, still the util available. Ferbs uh, can play the long haul. And Saints ultimately do not have a whole lot of space to bounce off of. They'll have to go into market. Very risky, but ultimately not yet totally checked. Ferbs uh, looking to go for something else into Boba. The showstopper shut down early. They did not expect Caillou to take that high ground, and they certainly didn't expect such a presence coming from Market. St. Clair turned the tables, get the drop, and now have 10. It was really a battle of which alt would come first. He's this neural theft once he acquired it, or that showstopper from Ferbza. Had it not been shut down, Ferbza's ult could have done devastating damage and easily could have turned the tides that last round. Not the case, though. Now Ferbza will not have that showstopper again potentially for the rest of this game. It really depends on how much he's activated again on this attack. Neural Theft available though. Instinct, a showstopper of their own. As oh, soon as contact is made mid, you can already see the setup between himself and Smiley. Flash out, showstopper, early tiles control will give you all the info you need, even if the showstopper doesn't connect. Well, Ferbsa, showstopperless, is going to do the same thing. Still just enter, invade, try and get enabled by the rest of the team that comes up behind him. Pack mentality seems to be working so far for both these squads, but for Lucky7, it's imperative at this stage. Seth again, the high ground to go for the two-way and uh, smoked out now. Really great, you know, just uh, util sacrificing that both these teams are willing yeah. to go for. They, they really do just want to let the guns do the talking a lot of the time, and I, I truly, on Sunset, I don't blame them. Seth? Crucial, crucial early pick here. Couldn't this get the still one. dangerous. Still dangerous for L7 if they overextend. Easy neural theft for Giza. Everyone's position's revealed. Link's got to be guaranteed here. Caillou is uh, the next fulcrum. Now the showstopper from Instinct coming from behind. Guys and out. so that's this pinch signal for Caillou. Two for two. Now with 3v3 on site. Giza from the back. Instinct unchecked in elbow. And the flank is still also there. Lucky7 might have too many directions to look. But do Saints have the time? Instinct misses the first. Entrance for Giza. Both of Lucky Seven's members on site are able to get it done. Herbs are gone, but a 2v1 that Smiley cannot win. And Lucky Seven can make it work to get to their namesake. Neurotheft came out, but for the team, I didn't expect. Huge. And again, not desperation, but you can tell how much... L7 desperately, well I guess it is desperate, desperately needed this round. Utilizing all the ults they could, the angles held, the safest round I think we've seen from L7 this entire qualifier. They couldn't overextend again. The barrier of Geezer's ult would have been too much. Now on a save, Saints have this opportunity to death ball. They could reacquire weapons again and get a crucial thrifty. But that's going to be a tough ask with that, these long sight lines. And so far, L7 playing it safe yet again. Defaulting out, expecting that aggression somewhere. It's just a matter of where and how can we find it. Oh, now Will's got to use that paranoia to even get out. But Saints are more than happy with that opening interaction. Early denial, even in bits and pieces, is lovely for them. Yeah. Saints right now, they don't want to use too much of their utility yet. Instincts nade, the Boomba not available. 
There's not a lot of utility to go around. You don't want to go for raw gunfights if you don't have to. A singular flash from Caillou is worth, like, gold here in this round. So is Giza's position to understand where the pack is going. How long can he hold on to this? He's going to play for elbow first. Double swing that Giza can win out on. Perhaps one more. Ferbsa, no. The paint shells can finish. But just in time for the Saints to come back. For the Saints. Oh, man, I could have said marching in. I, I, I already missed the opportunity. Oh, well. Somebody else will do it at some point, I'm sure. Especially if they make it far into challengers. But they still will stand three rounds away as Lucky7 will... Uh, will complete pretty cleanly. It's gonna be a crucial round. Wouldn't be surprised if we see attack timeout here. Saints, if they can't win and convert this full buy round, this force buy rifle, then we're looking at an even score line. L7, they've been getting a great drop, even with these early defaults, slowing the tempo down, keeping Saints on their toes has been good. Teamwork, the double swings in the beginning on these initial chokes have caught Saints end for a loop and losing bodies right away. Back to mid we go. No longer a tripwire there. L7, once they recognize that, they can make that early push up back again and ruin the economy of Saints once more. They're funneled in to do so now. Cut noise completely. They can't open the door. It'll give away this mid push. All through the back lines. Seth, if he turns around. Oh, walks into an onslaught. Now Smiley's got to try and save something. Actually, perfectly timed fault line and is gonna just commit the ult to this as well. Okay, I, I, I guess. Yeah, that's, I mean. That doesn't panic over yeah, if I've ever seen That's a little bit one. of a, yeah, I mean, that's, you don't get anything off of that. You can't collapse, I mean, you do drive L7 out of mid. I think that's the scare factor, right? You force him into the chokes. But Lucky7 are already yeah. intent on making noise everywhere else instead. Found Trick them. getting that opening pick on A main. Now, the neural theft doesn't really care about that though, as uh, the push is given away, so. This will be the full stack hopping on. Ferb's a great hesitation to make sure Caillou can't find anything. But this is still definitely an understanding of Saints being here for the fight. Giza, the first Amateur. trick, steps out just in time for Smiley to take him down. So now he's got to go crazy. A lot of you two in the pocket will empty most of it. In fact, just about all of it as Giza will make the rotation for Ferbson to now get pinched. Insane macro coming from Saints. And so Will will TP back over to A-Site. Spike in hand to play the 1v2. That was a stellar 2v2 right there. Smiley bringing out all that util just to buy time for Giza to rotate Boba. Now they're playing together. Only one piece of util for Will, a single shrouded step. He could fake info, he could fake noise here if he wants to, but he has no info about where this toss and turn of the rotates will be. One enemy remaining. First one down. You don't have enough time to change his position here, do you? Back elbow. Oh, pull your gun out, Will! Pull your gun out. Otherwise, Giza can get that done. Song. Ah, that is 11 to 8 now. That is a crucial opportunity gone for Lucky7 to finish this no up. I mean, Saints are set. Swing or be swung, man. Swing or be swung. That has been the defining trait of open walls, it feels Jeez, like. Jeez, dude. The buys are oh, great, though, okay. for Saints. Yeah, this is still fragmented from, from Saints. That's a good timeout yeah. call. I like this. I do too. I wish it came out just a hair bit earlier, but yes, I'm glad it comes out here. Now, this will be a good way to, even on a force buy, figure out, okay, again, how do we leverage these advantages? How do we make sure we can preserve this singular Vandal alive? And most importantly, how do we just get the 12? Don't get me wrong. You want to get the 13. You want to close out the series, get a step closer to qualifying through the lower bracket. But really, the immediate goal is to figure out how can we force Lucky7 to play for overtime? If it comes to that, obviously you don't want it to, but you're looking at Rolling Thunder, you're looking at Trix Hunter's Fury, there's a big stack up out of B that the team, the defense is not aware of yet. They're not going to have the weaponry to stop this onslaught of Lucky7 on the B site. They have to think of a plan with an outlaw and a vandal to shut this down no matter where it is. Yeah, where is, I mean, where is Instinct going to post up here? Is he going to play steps? I, are you going to like supplement with Smiley for top? Oh no, oh, they're just going to play mid. for lobby. Are they guessing this? They must be thinking it'll be more of a mid push from L7. Usually oh, when yeah. there's been all these thrifty rounds, 
that's where L7 like to go. Oh yeah, he's playing oh. for tile control first, but he'll immediately hear that entry on the main. Furbs to the opener, and now the rolling thunder to guarantee that Seth can't get out, but he still will with that CP. Back into the smoke, back into market, where Instinct is able to puppy guard it. Had he spotted, though, Furbs to kill number two on the board for the round. Rest of Saints have to come careening back on, and not much set up to go from there. Uh, crucial moment, again, just swept away. Smiley swept under the rug by that drone as well. Has to, again, play for the time for Seth to come back. For Caillou to do whatever Caillou's doing over on A-Site. I, yeah, this is a bit of a cleanup here. That Lucky 7 will just get done and over with. Will will actually get both, luckily. And Caillou, not nearly enough time. Uh, can't grab a good gun, so it's just going to hold up an elbow and, uh, you know, just, just wait for that scoreboard to say 11-9. Yeah, or somebody to chase him down, maybe get a free Vandal out of this. Really the best hope. But I mean, SEC again, we, we saw what Saints had to offer in that last round. It was one Vandal, a Judge was their second best weapon, Outlaw was there too. Kind of a risky investment, but I mean, again, it wasn't the goal to win this round. It was to figure out how do we get rid of those ults, how do we try to take back the site, unable to do so for at least one. Now, full buys come back. This is where it's prep time. Saints need to reconstruct their entire strategic play. So again, we have that tripwire going down on B. It looks like, though, this time, maybe more aggression outside of mid. Instinct is set up now with Seth. It's not Smiley this time. Instead, though, double flashes A site. Just gonna flood that utility, go for early info to make sure A site will not be pounced upon. And that's gonna add the triple crossfire eventually in B site for all these defenders. No info found outside of A. That's huge. Everyone else backs away on Saint's side. They're giving that site space away. Saints have been so good about these retakes. They can't squander bodies beforehand. Yeah. The speed is unchallenged here. Oh no. Herb's a little bit of an oopsie. Still does some damage to Instinct and can go for the market control. And Lucky7 can still get the spike down. Not nearly the connection that they might have wanted, but it's the connection that they'll work with. And set up four. Smokes again to timeout. Which Saints patiently await their way out of. Seth searching for that instant high ground. Somebody needs it at all times, but... The util setup has to get traded out for it, Caillou. Only good for one on that shotgun, but Will exits. Again, gun not out with the util ready. That's an instant shutdown, but Lucky7 normally, or luckily again, have enough presence to make this work. Seth recognizes these guns are too valuable at this stage. No way he's going to grab another with the crossfires that Lucky7 has set up. He will run back over to A site once more and let Lucky7 take another here. 10 11 now. And this is very reminiscent of the previous sunset. That was a 13-11 victory for Lucky7. Okay, we we'll have to get a few more rounds in a row before that comes to fruition, Tenrek. But I mean, you're right. It could easily happen here. The buys, not fantastic for Saints. They tried to go for the flood retake, preserving their utility and their guns to do so. Didn't work around the pillar of B. So now the big question is, if that can't work, do we change the tempo? The answer seems to be yes outside of B. A three stack, double flash Don't out, the stun alongside with Smiley, needs to be guaranteeing the opening pick. But this has been again for L7. The pulse is not there for Saints to find out what L7 want to start with. They know what the mission is at the end of the round, but what about the beginning? They're playing so reactively. But that's been how oh, they're able no. to contest, is with that speed that they come with, with that reactivity. Such is the way of Sunset, honestly. <laughs> Whoo! Good shot, Cloric. Again, uh, the, the Lurk Peaks Weapon and this here. counter aggression has been very modest, but also very influential one way or the other. Yeah. And Saints just lost their best weapon, the only Vandal in the arsenal of their team. Everyone else now sheriffs. I mean, look, people like Giza have been sheriff wonder wonders before. But when the stakes are this high and you're only two rounds away from moving on farther into the qualifiers, it's going to be hard to land those shots for anybody. Right there. Spike hasn't gone down yet. The stack up on Saints 4A could be good. Everyone just has to stay on A site. Yeah. Don't over rotate. Seth is hold up here. You can play for time at this point if you really wanted to. Paranoia is a bit early to the party, but so is Saints. Yeah. And Lucky7 
They gotta back out again. Do they not have time, time. For this? They don't. Oh, oh no, they hand spiked Will. Oh, yeah, you got the TP available. Left. But Seth, wait a minute, Seth! Five no! Left. Seth, oh. land your shots! Seth, land your sh Oh my god. That is a death sentence remaining. for Saints. Will picks up a three piece, a four piece, to give Lucky Seven the tie. And I think, I think anybody can get enraged at that play. You just woke up the whole East Coast. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Did what I peek that? out there? Like, uh, I, <laughs> you, 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 you cracked the earth in half. <laughs> but, man, that was so winnable <laughs> for an iota of yeah. a second from Saints. Oh, no. It's 11-11. That's why that tech time that was so important. How do you get to 12? Two more rounds for both these teams. Early stun is good. Drive them away from B. Funnel them over to A side. That's what you want, Saints. Mid. The bird. Valuable information. A default in play for Lucky7. Slow and steady may very well win the race. But that's not their style. It might have to be here. Breaking open the door. Adding question marks for Saints. Now they have to have coverage inside market. Less bodies on A. Just setting up all these chess pieces for a game they're not even playing. Good patience from Saints. They'll open up lobby and find Trick, who has all too often gotten punished for this late lurk. The Lucky Seven, they understand the weight. That is on B site. They'll use that to open up Elbow. They know that that's going to be free. Especially with Ferbs is still able to approach basically whenever he wants. Fall line to guarantee that back site isn't taken up. And so Ferbs can start the entrance on an alleyway. Saints do not have a lot of space to call their own. They do not have a lot of guaranteed intel instead. Caillou is still so far back. Yeah. But they have the majority of the damage. Ferbs will get finished after a great wall bang by Giza and the adjustment to farm out the paranoia as well. Smiley looking for the flank watch from Ali. Cloric is able to turn around and deal with that too. And now with the neural theft, Lucky7 has all the information they need to guarantee the rest of sight here. Instinct's gotta let fly that showstopper a little early just to play for spacing. He'll use it to grab Kanpeki and half of the spike. But Cloric is hopping on to find the rest of the team. So Will has the early peak on to spike. Lucky seven are on game point. Match point. What are the buys gonna look like for Saints now? The heroics from L7 have been unbelievable. Just when you think the tides can turn, there's a body advantage for Saints. Nope. Cloric diff. Yeah, we gotta see that again. It looked like it was all set up when Ferbs was eliminated there. Removing a lot of that backside prowess that had to be worried about, but no. Cloric again, just taking these 1v1s and stringing together headshots. Ah, uh, it's looking like that 3, Tenrec. This is, uh, yeah, this is this is looking like a map three. Getting ahead. Lucky seven seem to have it figured out. You just gotta do it one more time. Could go into OT. Quick TP Could from not. Will, just for intel. The flood in. Leads us to open. Another early paranoia here. He's a, a great turnaround. This guy has just been in the right place oh, all the time. Every whoa, time, the reads. How does he keep doing it? And Will's been found out already. Now you can just double swing this, right? Now Giza just wants it. Giza wants it so bad, he turns into the blocks. And he'll get it. Overtime. Second map in a row. Here we come. Is that the fastest caster curse we've had? Yeah, open that fall? was, I mean, I, that, that felt almost intentional. For, I promise I'm not, like, parlaying on here or anything. No, it's the penguin. He's doing it. It's true. He's raiding with the man. Don't worry, guys. It's the man know where the, the attackers are coming from. This is such a cool skate park. I have not, in my time of living in LA, I have not seen a skate park like this. I also don't go outside, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be part of the issue. Maybe that's, maybe okay. this isn't like any skate park we've seen, and Valorant is just banking on the fact that nobody's going to realize that. Are you telling me Valorant invented skate parks? Maybe this one. Oh, sick flip, dude. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Kitchen mad air. Gnarly grind, bro. That's okay, crazy. but again, big thing to consider. L7, defense, reads early on, need to happen. Op, risky investment. Instinct immediately hopping in. It's a good hard breach from Saints. Noise is heard from Kenpeki, though, and they have no real response on the double swing. 
It seems like they've let too many resources go towards too many angles right for that A push, rather than just holding on to main. But Kaya's gonna make it work. Diff Furbsa, as well as Kanpeki. First tap, Will's not prepped for it on the headshot. So a 2v2 for the post plant, but Saints do not know how close Chloric and Trick are, so they might have to- I don't to... think tr they know Trick has an op either. Oh yeah, that hasn't been given away yet. Trick has no easy way to get a Vandal here either, so I don't know how far Chloric is going to play this. Yeah, there's not a lot of easy setup you can do here. If Smiley gets one kill here, rolling Thunder to the last player. Oh man, yeah, that hurts. Uh, Trick not going to play Elbow first? Okay, now he'll swing oh. it where, where both of them are. Misses for a shot. Oh, maybe he doesn't. That's Giza's very lethal. low. Recon bolts into main. Now both of them are Elbow, man. We'll spot Giza, finish them. Side arm out. Not enough for Smiley. And now the Rolling Thunder stall, stall, stall. is available. Cloric only got halfway. Has to run away from it. Loses out. Now Smiley can play from the blocks. Cloric's just got to hop back in. No tap. He just tries to hold it. Smiley grabs the kill. And Saints have their game point. And winning the attacking side Match in overtime point. in that fashion is gigantic. The defense might be a different story. We've seen the gears turn in real time in Saints' heads. But they've been able to close it out and bring it to overtime doing so. They just have to make sure they could stay on their toes one last time, potentially for this series, and stay above elimination. Lucky seven, this is elimination point. If they cannot learn their lessons from what brought them into overtime in the first place, this is over. And that same lesson was the flood and retake from Saints. Completely surrounded and ambushed on A. Oh, Ferb's already blocked out. Fault line just Trying to, to bait out the rotate. Yeah, time that out. Maybe a little bit. Double check those clears. Caillou is holding very early on. Recon Bolt to flush him out will force away a bird, but Caillou's position is still guaranteed. With the Operator, it's gotta be. Burbs uh, doesn't want to take this fight. Chloric does, though. And can grab that kill. So now does Lucky7 actually fully commit to this? They don't know how heavy the rotation is from St. Clair. Normally, it's pretty heavy immediately here, but the rest of the team is actually playing the waiting game. Smiley posted up an elbow again. The paranoia... Oh, Smiley. Oh, no. Oh, buddy. All right. It's okay, 4v3. Yeah, you 3v3. still got the rest of your team here. Instinct from the alleyway can shut that down. So it's a 3v3 that Lucky7 can't Decent even flank. fully plant for. They don't understand how far back everyone is. Huge triple swing. That trick is a little early for, but the remainder can get it done. Giza, uncaught by the flash, though. Can turn back around and Lucky7 not look in the right direction. They're not checking their six. Giza locks it down. And in an instant, Lucky7's chances of contention and challengers are denied. St. Clair Saints have finally battled their demon and won. And they will make it to loser semis. My heart sank in that last play. Both of those attackers face in the wrong direction. No one covering Giza. It's small plays like that that bring you to VCL. And right now, St. Clair's, they're getting so close, they can taste it. And let me tell you, we talked about how Sunset would be a very punchy map, more heroics than Ascent, and let me tell you, we got so much of that. I mean, we, we were on the edge of our seats this time around. I lost years of my life seeing some of the plays, and let me tell you, this was a banger of a matchup compared to the first map. This is what I would love to see from these two teams. That was Raw action yeah. that, that, uh, yeah. that was everything I think we could have asked for out of these squads that we didn't really get to see a lot of on Ascent just because the, the teams have to play so much more by the book, but we saw, like you said, so many hero moments from a lot of these players everybody just really getting a chance to light it up but saints edging their way over the pack just a little bit they will go on to face thinking men in the losers semis in literally like 15 minutes they'll have yeah. a little bit of time to recover and recover they will need to for that was once again a battle to the brink against an l7 squad that just that just gave everything a battle of redemption too don't forget the team that sent you to the lower bracket, you get to eliminate? Oh, Ooh, that's spicy. Truly. Uh, and again, just this this last play from the back. Great hesitation from Giza. And uh, again, the one weakness, the one opening that, uh, that Saints get to see too often, they clear it. Once again, first kill is not their bread and butter in this matchup, but beyond that, they really did hold it down. Yeah.
I mean, L7, two maps in a row, essentially the same amount of first kills is beyond impressive, but it goes to show that's not everything. A lot of rounds, you know, Saints, they had to bypass the 4v5s, figure a way to use the environment, their utility, ultimates, their teamwork, to find a way to bring things to not only even odds, but still convert and win rounds. That's why on the defensive side, Saints, they started dialing back. They played flood retakes. They couldn't risk having... L7 take any more of their bodies away at the fir thir first 30 seconds of a round. And that's what ultimately brought them back. By the way, big props to Giza. 309 ACS, a 30 bomb to get farther and farther into qualifying for VCL. That's what you want to see from your Cypher. I mean, if there's anybody to facilitate the patience from that Saint squad, it is absolutely Giza. Always the one taking that back line, always the one watching from the greatest distance. Uh, he was ultimately contesting mid to market more than anybody else really was on the side of Saints. Uh, he is ultimately, I, I think, uh, the, the man that really had that overarching control over Sunset. Well-deserved MVP, well-deserved 30 bomb and a good couple clips to call his own for sure, but he'll have to farm quite a few more if Saints want to make it through to Challengers League. Keg, their work is not close to done yet. No, sir. We still have a lot of series to go today, but it won't be us casting the next one. We have a beautiful pair of amazing casters that will be filling us in and seeing how we can bridge ourselves to the very end of the VCL Open Qualifiers. But stick around. We have a lot more amazing matches. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back real soon.